Hi, Lauri. So Hi. good to talk to you. you How too. are you doing? Doing good. Thanks. Nice. Good times. Very busy days, but a lot of exciting things happening. You started out strong this year. I think that's what you're hinting at right now with a new single, Jezebel. Can you let us in on what your vision was putting that song together? I think it had, had something to do with last two years struggling with COVID and being very devastating and boring times for every one of us. But especially for musicians, because you can't do your thing, you can't play the concerts and pretty much like just being at home. Um, but when, when I was thinking like, what could we do? Something exciting. And then I thought of uh, the Eurovision. So I thought like, I sent the message to the band, like I have this new song, I think it's pretty good. And why don't we take part of the UMK and try to bid for the Eurovision? And they were like, okay, can we hear the song? And then when they heard the song, they were like, yeah, let's do it. We have a great song. So I think um, it was just a spontaneous idea, kind of like a vision that we followed very spontaneously. Uh, and, and that is good. You know, when, when you have these kind of feelings, you should really listen to your feelings and do what they say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trust your gut feeling, right? Not just yeah. uh, be stuck in your head all the time. I, I hear you. Now let's let's start in the beginning when you were writing that song, um, and it's like announced in your uh, press release to be this ode to powerful women. What's the song? The uh, what's the story this song tells? Yeah, it's. Uh... It's, it's about a girl, but also it could be anyone who is kind of an independent person, uh, brave and sometimes taking risks and, and not, not living maybe the ordinary life and just like being true to yourself and being original. And I think that could also be me. I find a Jezebel inside of me mm -hmm. is kind of a bit rebellious guy who's never done the things in the normal way I think you know from the very beginning when I was at school I was always kind of against the grain but at the same time a little bit like uh, with the grin on my face not being like serious too serious about life or about what people might think of me just like um, having maybe enough self-confidence to be special <laughs> Yeah, I think that's a, an important aspect you're mentioning right now, because if you, you're not confident in yourself, then you're probably just going to stick to the masses, right? Yeah, I think especially when, when I was younger, um, a lot of people were bullied at school, you know, and everybody kind of wanted to be the same just to be on the safe side. I mean, not everybody. I, I had a lot of friends who were kind of, crazy and we were actually doing things like cutting our hair off the on the on the forehead and going to school <laughs> the next day and like crazy clothes like going to the flea market to buy all the weirdest stuff we could find and just like but I think it was also a little bit like rebellious thing like to show the finger in the way like we can do whatever we want and we don't care about your comments yeah, and that's strong, especially when you're as young as you, as you are, when you still go to school, right? Um, yeah. So you did go your own way, as, as the Jezebel, I guess, is doing in the lyrics as well. Um, and you co-wrote the song with Desmond Child, which is huge, right? Because he's a huge songwriter for so many big artists. Uh, and you've worked together before, right? Yeah. So how come that this time you wrote together again well when i got an idea of the song and 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 the idea of trying to go to the eurovision i i actually i sent him a message that man i need your help i have this idea of the song but we have to make it the best song in the world <laughs> would you help to write <laughs> no help pressure to write the song with me <laughs> and he was like yeah of course come to greece and we write the song. So next day I flew from Hawaii to Greece. It took me 35 hours to get there. 
wow. really, really long way <laughs> from the other side of the world. Uh, but I got there, we started writing the song immediately, it took like three, four hours to finish the song. And very spontaneous thing. And uh, I know him from, from the, the past. We used to work together. We wrote an album together in 2008 and he was the producer too. So it's fun to work with a really superstar talent like yeah. him. I he has imagine. written songs for many artists like Bon Jovi. He's wrote, wrote songs like Living on a Prayer, You Give Love a Bad Name. He wrote song uh, Vida Vida Loca for Ricky Martin, and Alice Cooper, Kiss, Aerosmith. Like the list goes on and on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So many hit songs. So, so I'm glad that you actually got to meet and be stuck together in a room to write a song because I feel like the past two years for musicians, it was just Zoom meetings again and again and again to write songs and you actually get to be together in person. So that's great, I guess. Yeah. Um, and you already mentioned the pandemic hit us all hard, um, but I guess you have things to celebrate as well, just like a new band member. Mm -hmm. How does that, uh, like how it come and what was that like for you as a turning point for the band, I guess, also with uh, having to part ways with a founding member? Um, right. Yeah, it was also, it, it, it had happened for a long time already with him. I think he was kind of drifting away for a longer period, but um, just about a year ago, he let us know that he's leaving the band and we were like, oh, what do we do now? You know, mm -hmm. it was very devastating. We've already been suffering with the COVID and, and also I had some personal trouble in my life. And so it was really hard times for me. I was really depressed, really. I was really feeling ill and I, I just couldn't do anything basically. I was really low, but then I got an idea like, okay, we got to start. We've got to, we have to continue with the band. This band means everything to me. You know, it's the thing that keeps me alive, keeps me going, keeps me happy, keeps me busy. So I, I thought of Emilia. She is a girl that kind of famous in Finland. She has mm -hmm. played in different bands here. She's played guitar since she was five years old. And uh, I, I Googled her picture and sent it to the rest of the band like, what do you think? What do you say? Could she be the new guitarist of the Rasmus? And they were like, "Yeah, let's ask her." <laughs> so we we asked her, and she came to the the test playing uh, the audition. Um, we asked her to practice two songs, "In the Shadow" and then another song called "Immortal." It's more like a guitar oriented song. And uh, she was fantastic. She's so good guitarist. It's crazy. She's super talented, but also she's very funny and a very great personality. So at the rehearsals, the first rehearsals, she was playing, but also she was jumping around the room. Like, <laughs> Lots of energy. <laughs> like, a, like a little kid, you know, in a good way. Like, she was just like natural. And I think she fits the band perfectly. She's really like one of us. And also she has a nice similar sense of humor, which is very important. <laughs> yeah, I think so too. Do you think that talking about Jezebels and powerful women, do you think that she as a powerful woman that I think she probably is? She, she really is. I, I mean, that was another thing that is like strange, but great. Like, you know, after, after writing Jezebel, we, contacted her and she became the new guitarist so you know we all of a sudden we have a Jezebel in our band <laughs> we have some girl power it's fantastic I love women so it's like <laughs> they are That's the best thing. leaders and they are best in everything so I'm I'm so happy to have her with us well I'm glad you you found her and uh, I, I'm sure that was kind of a bittersweet moment to have to let someone go, but also embrace the new and the chances of the new. Yeah, of course, you know, it's a long friendship with Pauli, but he 
he really want, wanted to do something else in his life. You know, he had some other plans. And he said, like, he said he has no inspiration for this. So it's like, okay, you know, it's sad, but life goes on. Uh, we have talked to him like weekly, you know, he's still around, but he's, he's just doing other stuff. I don't even know, but you know, we want to continue. Life goes on. We found a great new guitarist and, and I, I think this is in a way a new beginning, a new birth for the band. It mm -hmm. feels like there's a lot, lot, lot of new energy here. New energy and going strong towards the special day that you got ahead this month with the UMK coming up. Um, what would it mean to you to represent your country in this way if it all works out for you guys? Well, it would be an honor, of course. I think um, Finland is known for music. For, for being such a small country, we've had pretty good success with artists and bands uh, worldwide. And uh, uh, we have been very proud of our boys like Lordi who won the Eurovision, the monster band 2006 in their monster costumes. You know, I was so proud of my boys. I was like, man, this is so cool. Finland always surprises me. <laughs> And um, last year, Blind Channel we did a great job. We've been talking to them a lot and uh, getting some tips and, you know, of the Eurovision, of, of the UMK. They were number six. So it's a great uh, achievement too. And they had a powerful show. And, and uh, again, the Finnish bands are getting popular. They're actually on a world tour now. They're in America today. So starting the big, big things. But it's it would be an honor to represent Finland there. I mean, I would love to try to win this for Finland. Oh, I'm sure. Fingers crossed. Like, how does it feel for you to prepare for an event like that? That's like going crazy somehow all the time with with big shows big entertainment like especially after this very challenging time of the pandemic i think this situation with the with the the competition is is very different from us from anything we've done before which is also fun because it's a little bit more exciting and uh more surprising and I'm actually more nervous about this than about anything in a long time. And that's also good because that, and I, I can feel the energy growing inside of me. And up till the moment we can release it, you know, it's, it's good. And uh, it's fun to have something ahead of you, like something to conquer, something to fight for. And also as we have the new guitarist in the band, this is really um, pulling us together as a group because we have something to fight for together. And so the timing is perfect in that way too. Nice one. Um, and you're working together on another goal, I guess, uh, working on an album as well. Can you already share some details about it? Um, yeah, we, we actually put the album aside for a little moment right now because we want to focus on the competition but uh, we have started the album already quite a long time ago and now that we have the changes in the group you know things are moving and developing uh, evolving so I, I would say it comes this year but I don't know exactly when <laughs> okay uh, first things first I think we have to put all the effort here to tried the win in Finland on the 26th of February. To get to Italy, that would be amazing. No, that makes sense. One thing at a time, right? So fingers crossed for the UMK and then fingers crossed for the record going well. <laughs> but there's 
something that's scheduled in your calendar for sure, and that's your tour that will hopefully take place uh, in fall, and you'll be headed towards Germany as well. You'll be playing in Wiesbaden, which is the closest venue to us. Um, what are you looking forward to the most when you finally get back on stage and play shows in front of your fans? I think it's the, the whole package, because I've this is like a lifestyle. It's gone on, oh, it's been going on from year 94 when we started. It's like my whole life I've been in this band, being so used to being touring and, you know, leaving home, packing my suitcase, going. It's just so much fun besides the gigs, of course, but also traveling with my best buddies and seeing the world, meeting local people, trying local foods, local crazy things, having great parties, you know, whatever it is, it's just always surprising me. You know, it's there's so much to find and discover. And uh, the funniest, the best, best part is to have maybe a local guide to take you to see the town or, uh, you know, it's, it's so much more when you have someone who knows the places, when you have limited amount of time. So we have, we have seen a lot. <laughs> it's like interesting things around the world. Oh, I can imagine. Are there any like spots left to discover or do you feel like you've seen it all like in Europe maybe? There's so much more to see and discover. I think also the cities look pretty different now than, than 10 years ago. You know, there are so many new interesting clubs, restaurants, coffee shops, you know, museums, whatever. It's, it's just like, um, it feels like the cities are very vibrant. Especially, I know that, you know, now I've been to Finland, I have lived in the States for eight years, but I've been in Finland for a couple of months now. And it's like a new city. It's like, it has the same soul, but there's like a new generation mm -hmm. who have their little shops and a lot of handcrafts, cool, like local clothing brands and whatnot. There's so much to find, so much new insp inspiring things. Yeah, for writing new songs then also maybe. Or do you write on tour as well? Yeah, I do, I do. And um, one thing that uh, inspires the most is the meeting the fans mm -hmm. and having that interaction with the, with the, the crowd. That is great because I always keep that in mind when I write songs. I always think like how this song might work in the live situation. I think it's, it's in the end, it's the most important thing. And I always feel that the, the tour and the gigs, they are the, the last final thing that you're aiming for. But when you build a song, create music, you always keep that in mind. Yeah, I hear you. You just mentioned meeting your fans as an inspiration. Like, how have you perceived the German crowd in the past? Like, I personally saw you live in 2003, which is yeah. crazy because it's such a long time ago. But, but how do you remember your German crowd? Uh, I remember them being really tough. They always, like, <laughs> stay outside the venue no matter what the weather is like, they will be there standing. Uh, like we have such hardcore fans in, in Germany, people who have followed us from the very beginning, at least the first time we came to Germany, like mm. 2001, uh, I still recognize some of the faces. They have sort of like grown up with us and it feels very special for sure. Yeah, I can, I hear you. I think that's crazy if they if like they um, are true to you for such a long time, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, Lauri, thank you so much for your time. Fingers crossed for everything that comes your way this year, and thank uh, you so much. have fun and enjoy the UMK. And uh, thank you so much. Thanks take for care. Nice thank you. Bye. Okay.